Hi, and welcome to this new video where I'm going to continue the work that we did in the previous video where we generated the model in Fusion 360. We exported it through a plugin URDF exporter. And with that plugin and that package generated, we saw that we had for us to a very good starting point to have functioning simulation in Gazebo out of the box. The problem that we had is basically three things. The first one is there's no control here. So this simulation, if you hit play, there's no control. We can't move it in any way. That's one problem. The second problem that we want to solve in this video is we have to connect the base link to the world so that we have a robot arm that it's fixed to the ground, to the table or something like that. We need that also. And finally, some cosmetic changes that will allow us to see the robot arm with color. Yeah. So let's get started. The first thing is you open your editor, the editor that you want to use. In if you use the Rojject, you'll have this code base IDE. And what I did was to create a new version of this package so that I didn't mess up the, the original package. Okay. But all these modifications, you can do them inside this ARMBOT ROS2 description package, the original one that was generated with the plugin. So I did this ARMBOT description where I essentially copied the, the contents of the Fusion uh, generated one. So if you have a look, the, the URDFs, we have the same files. The only difference is that I named it robot just because for conventions, it's better that you place your chakras inside robot folders and URDFs inside URDF folder, but it's just a convention. All the meshes again are the same. And what I did was add some extra launches, basically new versions of them. Okay. And we have this URDF visualize, which essentially is the same thing that we were doing. And I did a launch file that launches our VIS. Just cleaning up a bit, simplifying launches so that they are a bit more human to read. So using this package, if you go to the notebook, you can see that we can have several launches that I created for this purpose. So let's have a look. I created this package, Armored Gazebo, so that we separate simulation stuff from description stuff, because descriptions are used by everybody, not only people that simulate the robot, but everybody, people from control, perception, so on. While the gazebo one, it's only used by the people that use the simulation. So here I created some launches. And the first one that we're going to use is this Chakra Publish Launch. This one, the only thing that it does is use this Robot State Publish Launch and publish the Chakra in the Robot Description topic. If we have a look here, we go to Robot State Publisher and what it's doing is getting the chakra and publishing a robot description with the robot name. This is also an improvement because this will allow us potentially to have several robot arms of the same type, but with, but with different names so that they don't collide. So that's one feature. If you want to know more on how this is done, check out our course on URDF for ROS2. We explain this in detail and you'll understand much better what I'm explaining here. So again, Chakra Publish, Robot State. And with this one, we publish inside the robot description this URDF that was generated, okay? And then what we do is we start another script that launches our VIS. So we are separating launches so we are able to use them modularly. So let's go. We launch this script. Let's stop the simulation and let's launch Chakra Publish. There you go. The only thing that was done is ROS2 topic list. There you go. And we have this ARMBOT1 robot description 
where we have the description, the URDF essentially. Now the next step is we are going to launch the RVIS. Okay, there you go. And finally, we have to launch the third script, which is the joint state publisher, which publishes the state of the joints. Otherwise, ROS2 doesn't know the configuration of the joints, and therefore RVIS can't paint it, represent it correctly. So we launch the joint state publisher GUI with a remap because our robot description is different. It's not robot description, it's robot description with the name of the robot before. There you go. So we have it. You see that it works in the same way. We have the joints and we move them around. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Fantastic. Again, the robot description is just different in name. And what we've done is separated the launches so that they are cleaner and we can use them separately, independently. You might have seen that we have colors. So let's see how I added those colors. If we go, let me close this. What I did was I went to our chakra files and inside here, we give colors in ROS in two ways. If we only need the description for our viz, we do it through materials like this one. Yeah. So I generated new materials with different names for each of the parts, the visual parts. And these materials are inside here. We can see red, green, blue, yellow, and white. And this is basically the RGB and A, which is the, the transparency of that material. In this case, it's obvious red is red, green is the value green and blue the same, yellow, it's a mixture of red and green and white is everything in a maximum, okay? Did we have this in the original? Let's have a look. If we go here and we go to the URDF, if we go to the ARMBOT ROS2 description package, and we go to materials, you can see that it was used silver. For some reason, the colors that we added, they weren't added, and it's only added one by default, which is silver. That's why it appeared gray. So I just added that, and that made us give it color. Fantastic. So now there's this third step, which is how do I make it move? So if we have a look, here you have how to spawn it and how to move it. Let's see how it works, and then we'll see how this was done. Let's stop the different launch files and let's launch the main, which will spawn the robot, add the controllers and have everything working. There we go. So we have another difference, the colors. You can see the colors are there. We hit play and we see that the robot didn't fall. So it's grounded, it's connected to the ground somehow and it's not moving. So that means that the joints have control. So let's have a look how this was made. But first, let's see how it moves. Let's add the RVs. This for some loves. There we go. Okay. And finally, we are going to move the robot through a script. There you go. Let me put it there we go we are going to put it so that we can see it better both our viz and gazebo there you go there we go so now i execute the script And there you have it. So we can move the robot around through scripts and we have control. So let's have a look. Let's change this value, for example. This is the first joint. There you go. That's it. So how did we do this? How did we do all the modifications so that this works? Let's dig in. The first thing is the, the colors. Easy. So the colors were, were added in Gazebo 
and we added some colors here, which are the basic colors that Gazebo allows you to give. If you want to give it more complex colors, you will need to use dyes or some 3D format that supports textures or colors. In this case, because we're using STLs, we are using the Gazebo materials for that. Did we have that in the original? We did. The problem was that, again, Gazebo Silver doesn't exist, or at least, well, it exists, but it, it's not giving the correct colors, which is the red, the yellow, and so on. So we had to do this modification. This is the easy modification. Then, how did we do it so that it's connected to the ground? Another good point. If you go to Armbot Chakra, you can see that we added this link world. And this is a special link that when you add it to your chakras, you are able to connect to the ground in Gazebo. We then added this joint around here, which is a fixed joint without any translation, and it's connecting the base link to the world. Again, quite easy. And finally, how did we add control? You can see that this basic chakra has not modifi been modified in any way beside what we already covered. And what we added is this trans that we already had this in the original, but we didn't have this rush to control. And here, what we are adding is each of the joints with their limits, the initial values, and the control, the state interface, and so on. If you don't want to know more, again, have a look at the course on URDF that we have here in the construct, and everything that I'm showing here it's explained in much more detail. Once we have this, we already, we have to do also, if we go to Gazebo, also we have to add this Gazebo where we are adding the Gazebo system control and the configuration file for the joints. This is also added, which I think I added it here in the ARMBOT description. And we are adding, a con through the controller manager, this ARMBOT system controller that adds all the joints, the how we are going to control it, how we are going to move it, and some, some data and configuration elements. And that's it. That's to make the robots have control. Then, to make it move, I created this new package, which is trajectory sender. And inside here, there's a move arm script, which essentially is an action client. You can see here that is connected to this armbot system controller action. If we have a look at ROS2 action list. We can have a look that this is the action that controls the joints of the robot. So using this, I'm just creating a script that, based on the inputs that we give them through this, giving it the joints positions and the time that we want it to spend to reach to that configuration, it sends that to the action and that's what we saw. And you may be asking, okay, Mike, how can I learn all this? How can I learn more about ROS2? Because I understand more or less what you explained, but I want to know more. You're in luck because we are opening this master class for robotics developer for 2024, batch one, and you can enroll today. So if you're interested and want to make a career of this, you want to understand everything that there is about ROS on ROS2 and robotics development in general, this is the master class for you. So thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Peace.